and welcome into this week's Ask Mike. Alyssa Orange alongside Mike Irwin, Courtney Mims with the rest of the crew at SEC Media Day. So we get the pleasure of doing this together once again. Always good to be with you and we've got a lot of questions to answer. So Mike, we'll jump right into it. Here we go. Our first topic is from Rob's 4516 who says all the changes with the football program has me cautiously optimistic for this season. The one thing I question is how the team chemistry plays out. Do you think that team chemistry will be better this year? Anything specific that you can point to? Yeah, I think that's actually one of the biggest changes overall because you start with the offensive coordinator, which was a real problem with a lot of these guys. We found out when the season was over that, especially on the offensive side, they didn't like, you know, Dan Enos. It just didn't, they didn't click with this guy. Yeah, it didn't mesh. And KJ, especially the quarterback, didn't like the changes he'd been used to working you know, with Kendall Browse, and it just didn't work. So that's different. And uh, we wa I watched these guys as closely as I could last spring, and it just seems like when Bobby Petrino was here the first time, here's what I heard over and over from the players, and D.J. Williams will tell you this. You know, we work with him a lot. He was really hard to deal with. You had to really understand how smart he was and what he was doing for you to develop you to deal with him because he was so hard to be around. He's not like that anymore. And I think it's because you took the head coach, the, the head coaching responsibility away from him, made him just the offensive coordinator, which he's admitted was always the fun part of football for him, coaching. He's always loved the part where he runs an offense. So they t you take that off his shoulders. And I'm not going to say that he was just Mr. Nice Guy all the time, but he was much more reasonable. The guys talked about how they liked him, how they got along with him. How the, and anybody with a brain that understands football, and these players do, they've been involved with it, a lot of them since junior high school, even in peewee football, you know how good this guy is. You watch how he develops you. You see the genius of his offense, the way he works his receivers, the way he uses running backs as receivers, the way he gets people open, the, the play calling. Yeah. So that's a big difference. They all like that. That, that's a, that was a chemistry mm -hmm. issue. Then I think you've got a different quarterback mm -hmm. and that and a different NIL situation. The NIL situation was what I think was one of Sam Pittman's biggest problems last year. I don't think he fully got it. Uh, there were too many, the two guys got most of the NIL money. It was a real issue with the other guys. And it's more equally distributed now, but they went out of their way in the spring to make sure that Taylor Green and the other quarterbacks bonded with the, with the offensive line. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have that big disconnect between the O-line and the quarterbacks. We'll have to wait and see how it works this fall. But I believe all of those things will be different this year. And then the final piece of the puzzle, I really felt like the defense played well until the last few games. And I think when they saw K.J. kind of give up against Mississippi State, he never really played well after that. I think the defense finally went, we're tri tired of carrying this team on our backs. You know, we're, we're, we're just throwing in the towel. So I don't think you have that problem either anymore. Yeah, absolutely. All right, KY Hogg wants to know, do a lot of our fans really not know the difference between KJ Jackson and KJ Jefferson? This is a funny question. I read an online story where Jackson was saying great things about Petrino and all he is doing for the quarterbacks. But a lot of comments came from fans who thought the story was about Jefferson. Seems like we have a lot of angry fans these days who are tuned out of what's happening since last season. Ignorant, if you ask me. Well, it, uh, reading would solve that problem. Yeah, well, and some of it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> some of that comes from the similarity of the two names. So sure. I'm going to give some of these fans a little bit of a break on that. Okay, you're nice. But, but here's the problem. And I've talked about this before. If you're mad because of the way they finished, mm -hmm. and I was, I, I, I came, I said on this show right after the end of the season with the way they collapsed, maybe Sam Pittman should go off to Hot Springs. He said he always wanted to do that at the right time because I didn't like the way he let this team get away from him. But they didn't get rid of him, and he came back as a coach. And my job is not to sit around like fans and go, oh, yeah, I wish they hadn't got rid of that guy because i got to cover him again. I paid attention to what they were doing. And right off the bat, he hires Petrino, and that changes things. Then I saw what he did with the transfer portal, and that started to change things. So you see all of that stuff, and then you watch 
what Petrino did with this mm -hmm. offense, and, and, and I think a lot of fans tuned this out so much. They had so many opportunities this spring to pay attention to what was going on. They had two open scrimmages that mm -hmm. almost nobody came to. Now, I'm sorry, I, I, I make a lot of excuses for fans. I do say you have a right to your opinion, you have a right to get on the internet and complain, you have a right to be any kind of fan you want to be, but you're not much of a fan if you're going to sit and criticize this team, but pay no attention when you've got a new offensive coordinator, all these new players, and you can come out and actually watch them scrimmage on a Saturday and nobody shows up. I mean, there might have been 200 people there. Mm -hmm. It should have been three or 4,000 at least. So I'm, I'm telling you, I think a lot of these fans slept on everything that happened mm -hmm. in the spring. And that includes K.J. Jackson, because here's my experience with you this kid. You loved him. I loved him. You loved him. I'm looking and I'm watching Kalen, Kalen Green and I think he's gonna be good, but I'm looking at this freshman and I'm going, wow, I heard about him, but this guy is really good. He's smart. He makes good decisions. He can run and throw, and he's accurate with his arm. He's a, he's a good short passer. That's where K.J. had problems last year. He was always overthrowing the shorter p passes. This kid's accurate throwing a short ball, and he can throw a, a, a deeper ball too, but he's a good runner, and he's got, I wouldn't say he's got blazing speed. He's not as fast as Taylor Green, but he's got quick feet, which means he can see a seam, and boom, he goes through it, and then suddenly he's going to get 10 or 12 mm -hmm. yards. Yeah. So the fact that they don't know who this kid is, and I read that, it was an editorial in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and I read that, and I'm reading these comments, and they're going, oh, don't you know, aren't you talking about Kate? Well, he's not back. Well, what are you talking, what's this about? And it was just so obvious that so many of these people had never heard of this kid. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, he was one of the big stories this past spring. We did a lot on it, and so did a lot of the print people. So... Yeah, they dropped yeah. the ball on well, that. Well, here's the deal. If you don't know who he is now, you will very shortly. Because he's really shortly. good. Exactly. He's He's got a bright future ahead of him. All right. Marty Bird's proxy says, I think everyone is in agreement that the first six games of the football season are going to determine a lot. There should be two wins built in. We've said that before. Out of the other four, Auburn on the Plains, OSU in Stillwater, Tennessee here, and the Aggies in, well, you know where. Which do you see as the most winnable of the four and which seems un most unlikely for a win? Yeah, I got to go with Auburn and A&M. I, I think they okay. can beat Auburn. It is a road game. But oh, I think so you think those are wins? Yes. I, okay. I th those two, I think they can win. Okay. I think they can beat the Aggies. Yeah. They don't have Dumbo there anymore, but I still think they can beat them. <laughs> yeah. And I think they can win at Auburn yeah. on the road. Now, Oklahoma State, that's going to be a tough game. Mm -hmm. those, those fans are mad. And they're mad because Oklahoma left and didn't take them. They're, they're looking at the SEC and so why weren't we good enough to go? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you invite us? And so they're going to be out to show this SEC team, hey, we're good. And it's a tough place to play anyway. That stadium yeah. is very loud. So that's going to be Tennessee. Come on, playing those guys, they're good. They are good. So I'm not saying, I'm not conceding okay. either one of those games, but I'm okay. saying of the four, the most likely sure. wins are Auburn and A&M. You know, my, my answer, so A Arkansas just plays A&M really well, regardless of what's going on with either team. And usually and I, loses, but they play well. I know, well. but they play well. And so I think A&M is a winnable game. I don't, I think your most unlikely win is Tennessee. I, I don't necessarily think you can go on the road and beat Auburn at Auburn, but again, they did it two years ago, so you never know. I think Oklahoma State could be winnable Maybe. because you just don't know what Mike Gundy team is going to show up. And it's week two, I think and you just don't really know a lot about your team yet. They, so may, have, they may suffer from a little bit of rat poison because everybody's talked about how good they're going to be this mm -hmm. year. And with Texas gone and Oklahoma gone, a lot of people are saying, yeah, oh, they're going to dominate. And they, they've got that Heisman candidate running back that's sure. already gotten in trouble. Sure. Well, and didn't really punish him very much. Just uh, this stuff Gundy said was idiotic. It's like, oh yeah, he went out and got drunk. He blew it. He yeah, blew that, a point eight. I did that all the time. That's a whole nother <laughs> yeah. question for a whole nother day. And yeah, yeah I mean, but that could be an issue for them. I yeah, don't know. we'll see what happens. But I, I'm excited to go over to Oklahoma State and see how that game turns out. So it should be fun. And all right. Jason will be over there. I know. Can't wait. I know. <laughs> I know. Everyone's excited to be reunited with Jason. Okay.
Don't you tell him I said that, though. <laughs> Donna Jo says, in these stories about a super division for college football, I've been reading that Arkansas might not get in. That seems wrong to me. What do you think? It is wrong. Okay. And, and, and these stories have, have been put out. Talked about it last week. You weren't here, but I talked about it with Courtney. It's clickbait. You scare people. Scare tactics get people to, to click on the story. And this is a scare tactic statement that Arkansas might not get in. Let me explain this super division a little bit once again, even though we've talked about it a lot. The idea is that college football, a year or two down the road, might create a super division. They're talking about 45 teams, but they're also talking it could be as many as 64. Okay. The issue with this is you got to have enough money to play in this big boy league because what they're going to do if they create this is you're going to take all this NIL stuff and it's going to come out of the budget, the athletic department budget, and you're going to have to p take all of your scholarship athletes in all of your sports and give them something like thirty or 40000 a year. Okay. And I believe it's going to happen because I believe it's going to be forced on them because you can't continue to not pay these a lot of these spring sport people and especially the the uh, Title IX athletes, you're going to have to give them the same. I think it's always been an issue of everybody getting the same amount. Now, this, okay. this division wouldn't mean you wouldn't get an NIL if you're a great quarterback or whatever. Mm -hmm. You might be able to work out your own deal. But what I've read is if they create this division, mm -hmm. it's going to allow the NCAA to go back and enforce some rules, and it's going to make some things work that don't work right now. So... What do you have to do to get in? You got to have money. You got to have the money to pay. Some say this could be 20 or 25 million dollars just out of your budget to go to these athletes. But a lot of people believe that the, the extra TV money you're going to get will pay for a lot of that. Now, the reason a lot of people are scared about this from Arkansas is they've heard that Arkansas has NIL issues. NIL money is totally separate from money that you have in your athletic department from donations and ticket sales. Arkansas consistently ranks in the top 20 in, in revenue for years. And two years ago, which is the last time I, I was able to find numbers, they were ranked 20th. You're not going to go from 20th to 45th or 60, 64th in two years or whatever when this happens. They're in right now. They're not only in, they're solidly in. They've got plenty of money to be able to do this. That's a lot to wrap your head around. Yeah, it is. But what I'm telling you is they've, <laughs> like, got, a, they've got enough money to sure, do this. Sure. I'm just talking about this super division in general is a lot to wrap your head around and how it would all work. Because you talk about the NCAA, but right now the NCAA doesn't control college football. College football is it's kind of its own thing right now. Well, so the, 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 they the would playoffs have to agree and stuff. To do it. So yeah. you'd have to. It would yeah, play into it. There's a lot. The reason it'll happen, I think, is because you can't afford not to do it. They've got to come up with a way to solve a lot of the problems that exist right now because you don't have any rules. There are no yeah. rules on money and recruiting with athletes right now, and they've got to get it under control, or fans are going to stop watching this stuff. The biggest issue is, is unlimited free agency. You just yeah. leave if you, if you get offered more money. They've got to figure out a way to do that. This would be, be a way to make it happen. And what I'm telling you is don't listen to anybody that tells you Arkansas might be left out. They're not even close to being at the edge of this thing. They're right in the middle in terms of the money they have. Okay. J.B. Carroll asks, Mike, do you have memories of Monty Kiffin and his time in Fayetteville to share? Yeah, I do. And he was, he, here's what happened. And, and I was a young reporter, and mm -hmm. I was guilty of not paying attention a lot. <laughs> But Lou Holtz had this reputation of being an offensive genius, so everybody kind of, and in those days, you could go to practice. There were only about six of us that covered the team on a daily basis, but they let us go out there every day and watch the whole practice. You know what we did? Watch the offense. We watched the offense because of Lou, and he was good. But what we weren't paying attention to was the, I'm telling you, as good as, as Lou Holtz was as an offensive coordinator, he was a head coach, but he ran his own offense, as good as he was, Monty Kiffin was better. And we didn't see that. A lot of us didn't see that happening. And the evidence was right there. That, that 77 season and the year before Arkansas had, had some problems on defense, they held opponents to an average of eight points a game. Wow. Eight points a game. Now, here's the other thing that happened. When they started 
getting ready for that Orange Bowl, and Lou Holtz suspended those three offensive players. Again, everybody's looking at the offense. Oh, are they going to be any good? What's going to happen? So we're over there watching them. And very quietly, <laughs> what Monty Kiffin is doing is he made some schematic changes with his defense to stop Oklahoma's quarterback mm -hmm. and mess with their heads. And we paid no attention to that. I know because I was there. And then... What happened was this game starts getting played, and again, everybody's talking about the offense, but it was the defense mm -hmm. that just kept, they turned a team that was averaging 35 points a game into mush. They didn't know what they were doing, and it was Monty Kiffin that did that. And in the, he continued to do that in the three years that he was here. Arkansas won 30 games. Yeah. That's 10 games a year. Yeah. And... Yes, Lou Holtz had something to do with that, but Monty Keita never done it without Monty Kiffin. Now, the other thing I remember <laughs> about him is there was this little toddler that would come to practice sometimes. His mommy would bring him over there, and you'd see him running around after it was over doing some things, and he was about two years old when it started, and then three years later, I guess he was five. But one day, and I've long forgotten who said this, one day one of the reporters said, a sports writer, he goes, who is that little kid? He's always out here. And somebody else says, you don't know him? That's Widow Wayne Kiffin. And you know that to this day, I always refer to, to Wayne, Lane, Kiffin. Lane Kiffin as Widow Wayne Kiffin. Widow Wayne Kiffin. That's where yep. that came from. <laughs> Just what that guy said that day. I, I still remember when he became a coach. Yeah. Years later, I'm yeah. going, that's Widow Wayne Kiffin. <laughs> <laughs> well... Little Lane Kiffin's getting a lot of love at SEC yeah, Media is, Days today with that Ole Miss team he's put together. All right, here we go. Eddie Lynn wants to know, what is the number one thing you want to get from SEC Media Days? A lot of people say Sam Pittman and how he handles it. I'm interested mm -hmm. in Taylor and Green. Yeah. He's the quarterback. We, we saw what he did this past spring, but he's going from the Mountain West to the SEC. That's yeah. a big change. And what does he, I don't know what, what his press conferences were like, you know, at Boise, but I know what they've been like here. And there might have been 15 of us at most at those, some of those press conferences, 12 to 15. He's in, this week, he's going to go in that big room at SEC Media Days, the big room with all the writers, where there's like 500, 600, 700 of these guys, and it lasts a long time. And he just gets peppered with questions over and over. I want to see how he handles that. Yeah. I also want to know, what does he talk about? You and I disagree with this a little bit. You think Bobby Petrino's name is going to be mentioned a lot. Yeah, I think I said, I asked you the over-under, and I said 10. I th and maybe you're right. But here's <laughs> the problem right now. I not only think the rest of the SEC is sleeping on Bobby Petrino, I think Arkansas fans are sleeping on him. Again, and here's what's going on, I think. I think they're looking at what happened at AM last year and going, well, he was no big shakes. AM got his coach got fired. They hired him as the offensive coach. That was Dumbo's fault. Dumbo Fisher took over the he did he hired Petrino and didn't let, didn't let him run. Made the Petrino offense. change all his vocabulary. Exactly. Yeah. So here's Bobby Petrino <laughs> running his offense, and that's all he's doing. Yeah. And I watched Sam Pittman is not over there telling him, you know why? Because Sam Pittman is over helping Mateos coach the offensive line. Mm -hmm. He's not watching this stuff because he trusts him. Yeah. And I think people are sleeping on Petrino. I think that's going to end up being the biggest story of this fall. And I want to see who talks about this. Does this come up? And Taylor Green's a perfect guy to talk about it. We mentioned before that K.J. Jackson talked about him mm -hmm. and what he had done. Well, I want to see if Taylor Green does the same thing. Yeah. Should be fun. They go on Thursday, by the way, if you're curious. Arkansas's day at FCC Media Days is Thursday morning. All right, Courtney says, is this our Courtney? <laughs> yeah. Look, she's here. She's here, but she's not even really here. But she is at SEC Media Days. And she says that Greg Sankey at SEC Media Days just said athletes aren't looking to be employees of the universities when he has talked to them about NIL. Mike. What do you think? Okay, we were just talking about this, the super division. Yeah. Here's what I think. I think a lot of the, now look, these guys all have agents now. Mm -hmm. They got NIL agents, and that they're getting them these big deals. What does an agent do? An agent makes money if you make money. Mm -hmm. You think these, here's what 
the superdivision will do. It will reduce the amount of money that's going to these high, top high profile football and basketball players and spread it more evenly among all athletes. So these are, what are these agents going to say about that? They're going to tell, oh, you don't want to do that. Lobby not to do it. Don't do it. Oh, it won't be good for you. No, it won't be good for you personally, financially. But here's the problem again. These guys, in effect, right now are professional mm -hmm. athletes. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the rules that professional athletes deal with. They don't have a draft. No. They can still go wherever they want. They don't get drafted. Uh, they, they don't have a salary cap. And they have unlimited free agency. Think about how good that is. You can go to a school, have a good year. School likes you, but somebody else goes, hey, we'll have our agent contact this guy. So his agent contacts you, and, the, and then the, they contact your agent, and your agent tells you, so ter theoretically you're not breaking the rules, and then you end up over at this other school making a lot of money. This is what drives fans nuts right now. A guy plays well, and then he's gone mm -hmm. because he gets offered more money. But it's un You couldn't do that in the NFL because you would have a contract. Well, if you go to work for the, in, with the school system, There's if you're an contracts. employee, you would have a contract. You couldn't do this. Yeah. So my reaction to this is these are athletes looking out for their own be best interest, not the best interest of you, the fans, or college football. And they're going to be, it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen because if it doesn't happen, we got big time problems. We can't continue to run like this. It can't. Yeah. It's only going to work for a few more right. years. And it's getting messier as, as it continues. It is. Hob Hog wants to know, are there still academic requirements of players today, GPA and number of hours passed per year, et cetera? I haven't heard much about it since NIL and Portal Free Agency. But, yes, if there are rules, they are academic ones to yes. stay eligible. And, and I knew that, but I checked just to make sure. Yes. Because I was worried that maybe something did change. Now, here's what I'm surprised about. Let's say you're, you're, you're at a school and you've, done, you've had a good season. So another school contacts your agent and says, hey, we'll pay you. We know what you're in. What's his NIL? And you tell, your agent tells, oh, he's getting 300000 Okay, we'll give him five. So the guy goes, okay, I'm going to hit the portal. But he tries to hit the portal, and guess what happens? He's not academically eligible to transfer. So he can't. He's stuck. I'm surprised that one of these people hasn't filed a lawsuit to get rid of the academic progress rate. Now think about how stupid that would be. Yeah. You're there to get an education. Mm -hmm. I think you'd lose that lawsuit. Yeah, at that point you're playing collegiate you, athletics. You are. You have to go And to so college. thankfully this is one of the good stories that that academic progress mm -hmm. with all this other craziness, it's still in there. If you hit the portal, you got to be academically eligible. Yeah, which is good to know. Um, all right, Hog Redneck says, Calipari was asked the other day about rumors that before you could legally pay players, he was paying them. He said something like, if a coach had a player committed and I really wanted that player, I was going to get him. Because Calipari can say things like that. <laughs> yeah. So was he admitting that he would actually pay to get a player or was he just saying I was that good a recruiter? So here's yeah. the thing. I don't think he was saying I cheated. Mm -hmm. Who would be dumb enough to do that? I wasn't there when he made this statement, but I think what he was saying is, look, I can get players. I don't have to have money to do it. Now, here's the thing. Now everybody can use money. Mm -hmm. They all, all got money available to them. Well, we know that he went out and got a great recruiting class and, and brought in a lot of portals and port guys out of the portal. He got mm -hmm. some really good freshmen, too. He didn't do that for free. He used money. But the he, that schools he was recruiting against had money, too. Mm -hmm. So how did he end up with them? because the guy can recruit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this because I believe it. I think sure. he's the number one recruiter in college basketball. The top of the, I think he's at the top. Here's what, here's what one of his assistant coaches said, and, and I've asked other people about it, and they said it's definitely true. AAU people will tell you this. They said when he walks in a gym at an AAU event, okay. he's like a rock star when he walks in. In other words, the word starts circling. Oh, Calipari's here. Ooh. And everybody starts looking around. There's John Calipari. That's yeah. the kind of effect he yeah, has. Yeah, Kevin mentioned that on our recruiting report yesterday when I was talking to him. He said he was watching a lot of those, you know, the Nike circuits and all of those AAU circuits. 
uh, on the live stream because he wasn't there and they kept showing just people going up to Calipari yeah. and talking to him on the live stream of yeah. these basketball games. And we've seen his personality yeah. is what we've seen. We've seen him just go up and interact with people and embrace all of Arkansas. He has specifically made statements that he wants to get to know the whole state. Yeah. He wants to understand every part of the state and know about it. He's making all the right moves, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, before he ever coaches a game here. Yeah. But this guy can recruit. Yeah. And if we do away with a lot of this NIL stuff, and I think we're going to, he can still I still recruit. think he'll still be able to recruit. He's always been able to recruit, and I ain't been around that long. S. Giles asked, did McIntyre's return to the baseball team surprise you, and what will he add to the pitching staff? It did surprise me. It came okay. out of left field. I didn't think he was coming back. Mm -hmm. And what can he add? Okay, first thing he can add, in my opinion, is tremendous leadership because mm -hmm. of his experience and his age. He's going to be a force in that dugout, a force with, on the pitching staff. He can do mm -hmm. a lot of good with this team. Now, what about as a pitcher? This is my opinion. And I hesitate to do this, but this is what this, this show is all for. about. I don't like to give Dave Van Horn advice, but I'm gonna, it's just my opinion. I've always seen McIntyre as a two or three inning reliever. And too many times last year at the start of the year, he had success by going four and five innings. So they went with it. And I think he kind of went downhill. What he's best at is that curveball that drops right, right at the plate. I mean, it looks like it's coming in waist high and you swing at it and boom, it's right down at the bottom of the plate. When he's having problems, you see him do that for an inning, maybe two innings, it starts coming up. And when it does, that's when they hit home runs mm -hmm. off of him. So I would like to see him limited to an inning or two. Maybe if he pitched two good innings, you bring him in in the third, and then you watch. Mm -hmm. And if he struggles a little bit, you take him out immediately. Yeah. I think they left him in too long. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. You know, I got to sit down with him after he made that announcement, and, and he made a really good point on why he came back and saying, I had a childhood dream to play at Arkansas. I'm from Bryant, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play here. I also had a dream of playing professionally, but I felt like when I looked back in 20 years, what would I regret more? I would regret not playing one more year as a Razorback. Sure. And I think it's because of the way that 2024 that went for him. Exactly. And he told us, he goes, you know, baseball is going to have ups and downs. And usually when I have a bad outing, I bounce back quickly. He goes, there was a month there where I wasn't bouncing back and things weren't getting better for me. And that was a tough lesson that he learned that he thinks he can really uh, use in this upcoming season as a leader and as a guy who is just out there knowing this is his last, real last year pitching for Arkansas. So I, and then you need a guy like that oh, on your yeah. staff when you're bringing in all these other guys. Even if these other guys are more talented, a guy like Will, who has been in the locker room before, is going to bring a lot of value to yeah, you. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about you don't have to win with Arkansas kids. In fact, theoretically, if you go back and look at recruiting. This one literally defends every point you've ever made about this yes. conversation. I, I'm not saying you don't need Arkansas kids. You do. You don't have to just totally load up on them, and you can lose some, like in football, and not be a disaster. But this is how they help. Mm -hmm. This is how having an Arkansas kid can help because he's in that locker room and he's showing everybody, hey, you got that hog on your on your uniform. It means something. And they, they learned that from him. Yeah, it was funny. He made a comment. I promise we'll move on. But this was funny. I left it out. But he goes, you know, I'm definitely the oldest. He said, I'm the only person on this roster who remembers being in the old locker rooms. <laughs> and I was like, man, that's that is a wild. Yes. And he said, he goes, man, my freshman year, I was sharing a locker with like three other dudes. And now we have this beautiful facility. Yeah. And he said, I don't take anything for granted. He said, if anybody complains about anything, I was like, y'all don't even know. There's no complaining around here. Yeah. I, he shuts it down Not quickly allowed. because he remembers having to share a locker with other guys in that old building before the new facility was built. So, again, we, we love that Will McIntyre is coming back, and, and I'm excited to see what that means for this Razorback team. All right. Razor Alex 88 says, so Coach Courtney, who was on the road at SEC Media Days, if you missed the start of the show, what is your first dynasty for college football 25? I'm thinking of starting with NC State until I get used to the controls. Got to bring them some ACC success to get them to the playoffs. All right, here's the deal, Razor Alex 88. <laughs> I know her answer. Her answer, because we talked about it, 
last week on PTN Extra is her dynasty team is UAB, the Blazers. She has a little Dungeons and Dragons tie-in. Right. She That's her dynasty team. Uh, for you, my unsolicited advice is the heck with NC State and Boo Corrigan. Those guys are... <laughs> I don't like if I have to, you know, make some micro and sound ACC. effects. No, thank you. No, thank you. Pick a different team. Okay, don't pick Virginia Tech, but pick a different, different team in the ACC if you're going to build them back. Uh, Miami. Miami might need some help. They're not going to have any success on the real football field, so yeah. you can bring them some success in the video game. That would work, too. Okay. So there you go. I don't play video games, so I don't. I, Courtney and but Jacob made me pick. But you talked to her. Yeah, Courtney and Jacob made me pick a team when we were talking about this, and I picked... Uh, UNLV, the Fighting Mary Yeah, okay. be my dynasty team if I ever pick up a remote control. We'll see. I got an Oculus. I play walkabout mini golf with my six-year-old. That's <laughs> about the extent of my video <laughs> game playing. Okay, last question? I think so, Mike. Uh, uh, WV Hog Fan wants to know, I may be an old foggy like Mike, or an old fogey oh, like yeah. Mike, but what is all the excitement about the new college football 2025 football game? After all, it is just a yeah, game. And it is, oh, it no. Is diff Good thing different Courtney, guy. Is, it's, Courtney is, is not here. We had the graphics wrong. What, what, okay. Who asked that question? Razor Alex. Razor Alex again? Okay. No, it wasn't Razor Alex. I don't know. WV Hog Th fan. That was, that was the, we had the graphic wrong okay. at the top. All right. Well, um, WV Hog fan wants to know. Yeah. Okay. Look. I don't want to give the impression that I think people shouldn't play video games. Mm -hmm. I'm not an old fogey. I just don't <laughs> do it myself. When they first came out, we're talking Atari. We're talking Mattel of television. <laughs> I did some of that stuff, but I got kind of addicted to it, and I thought, wow, this is a little over the top. So what I always have done with addictions, no matter what they are, I was drinking too much when I was in my 20s, and one day I just woke up and said, I'm not doing that anymore, and I cut it off. And to this day, I do not drink. So I just looked at those video games and went, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. So I stopped. But that doesn't mean I have an issue with it. But here's the other thing about with me and video games. And it's the same thing with this, this stuff. What's this stuff you do where you, um, I forget the name of this thing, where you pick a player and you pick a team and you, you draft players for teams. Oh, fantasy football. Fantasy okay. football. <laughs> I was like, I don't okay. know what I've never gotten talking. involved in okay. that either. Okay. Because here's the thing. I like games. I like watching games. Okay. People have no clue how much I enjoy watching college football. Now, for the past 50-something, 50 51 years or yeah. whatever, I've had to work. Mm -hmm. So you, you probably don't remember this, but I would come to mm -hmm. you and Jason before that when we had an open date, and I would say, hey, I want to be off this weekend. And so mm -hmm. I would just I'd tell my wife, Go somewhere. Get out of the house because I yell all the time. And you know that yes. when I watch games, yes, I, I yell. I send him home sometimes. I like some yelling at referees. I get mad. But look, it doesn't matter who the two teams are. There can be two teams I don't care anything about. I will watch a game for 10 minutes and I will decide who I like uh -huh. and who I don't like and whether or not I'm mad at the referees. And then I'll okay. just scream and yell the rest <laughs> okay. of the game. It's fun. I enjoy it. Are you saying you can't have that in football video games? You can't yell at refs? Uh, it won't be the same. Yeah. I'm telling you that you guys have been kind enough to kind of let me soft land into retirement mm -hmm. instead of just going, hey, he's got to retire now. You kind of let me cut back. Lisa Kelsey a let me bit. a few years ago mm -hmm. said I didn't have to go on the road as much, which yeah. I enjoyed because going on the road is overrated. It, is it drives you crazy. So I didn't have to do that as much. And then it was like, well, I didn't like going to football games here because it's just nutsville over there. Mm -hmm. I like, still like going to Bud Walton and still like going to Bomb Walker, but football games is a whole different deal, the way yeah. you cover it. It's, like a, it's a whole day thing. It'll yeah, wear you out. it'll wear you out with all those crowds. So I kind of dialed back from there. But I'm still having to work back here at the station all day long, and so I have to worry about Arkansas and do that, and then I've got job a job I have to do. So you don't see many games. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times we're here at night at 10 o'clock. Well, now, for the first time since, really, 1972, all I'm going to have to do is go up and do the game day show, which yep. that's nine, 10 to 11. 10 is that one? 11. 10 to 11. Yeah. And then the game started at 11. So yeah. I go home, and I can sit there all day long for 12 hours or more just watch and just watch games. And so people who are always talking, because they do this, they go, dude's mad. People are always thinking I'm mad. Last week I got accused <laughs> when a, a list... 
when Courtney was talking about this college football 20, people said I looked like I was wanting to kill her. I was totally <laughs> bored, you know. It's just it's the normal look on my face. If you He's saw up. me. If you saw me mad, He's you would not. He's got resting old man face. Yeah, it's, it's not just, on purpose. Yeah, it's not on purpose. I'm just, I'm not going to sit there and do this all the time <laughs> when somebody's talking to me. You know, it doesn't mean yeah. I'm mad at him. Okay. But now, dude will not be mad. Dude on will say, not be mad. Dude will be excited yeah. and happy yeah. because I know yeah. that every Saturday I'm going to get to watch college football all day long. My wife will have to leave the house. She has no option. And the dog Sorry, will stay. Gary. Milo, the dog will stay there with me okay. because he he's okay. Does with he like it? it? Okay. Well, he kind of looks at me like, "What's wrong with you?" If I start yelling at something, but it's okay. okay. And I'll get to watch all these games. Yeah. And the other element of this is ESPN three, sure. which is a fairly recent development. I can now watch games that you'd normal would, normally wouldn't watch before. I talked about mm -hmm. the grandson of a guy who played high school football that passed away about month and a half ago and meeting him at the uh, memorial service and he was the nicest guy ever. He's a cornerback for Nevada and I'm going to get to watch his games now. I'm very excited about that. And then there's a new, it's not new, it's just that the, we're in, a lot of us are in a group. You're not in it. You're fuddy-duddy. But, but, ah, I'm sorry. I but, pay my own bills. But we're in a group <laughs> of, ES, of uh, YouTube TV. You guys split YouTube we TV split it. amongst yourselves. And yes. they got cheap and got rid of the 4K I feature, and, which I You're love. You're not going to be cheap anymore. No, we're going to pay for it this time. And so here's what happens. They pick, okay. a ga they pick certain games. It's in 4K. I'm yep. telling you if, you, if you've got a 4K TV, especially the kind I've got, it's real fancy. And it's in 4K, you can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable on a big screen. The other thing is, the audio they do, do, I've got an optical cable that comes out of my TV and goes into to a tuner, mm -hmm. and it sends it to a surround surround stereo yes. system in, oh, in yeah. the room. You'll so make I can sit there, shake. And, and it's like you're sitting in a giant stadium with all this, and you can hear all this noise going on and people talking, and it's like, it's like you're actually sitting there in the stands watching this game so I can just go from place to place to place to place dudes happy dudes happy <laughs> hey by the way for the record I made you a dudes mad shirt one time for your birthday have you ever worn it maybe when you're doing yard work no I've got it somewhere, it's somewhere I, I, my wife said mad. if you wear that people will really believe that <laughs> and they'll think you're mean or something it's just funny I'm not really mean am yeah, I sometimes Really? Yeah, when Only like one. Arkansas is playing and they're losing. You well, know. I'm just yelling at TVs. That doesn't make me mean. You just yell at the TV and get your frustrations out. I don't know. It gets a little scary. Nah. But that's <laughs> that is all the time we have for this week's Ask Mike. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you right here next week.